Aloha, my name is Doug Ellenberg and I work for Verizon here in Hawaii. Now I work for the part of Verizon you're probably not that familiar with. Um, it's not the wireless side where you go in to buy your cell phones and such, it's the wireline side. Now, Verizon has a lot of different businesses, Yahoo for one, under their Oath brand, um, Yahoo lives over there. On the wireline side, we do kind of business to business stuff and that means we work with businesses to interconnect their other businesses together. So if there's an office in Hawaii that needs to communicate with their office in Los Angeles, we can provide the circuits so that the data can transfer from their laptops to their computers or mainframes or whatever they have in California, uh, the client server stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what kind of organization and company do you work for? Like I said, it's Verizon Wireline. I work for um, Global Network Operations West. I'm a senior manager in that organization, and uh, my responsibilities are uh, Hawaii. I have two organizations. I have the Verizon business side, where we do interconnectivity for companies like Kaiser Hospitals or Young Brother Shipping. They're the ones that do the big container shipping between Hawaii and the main uh, mainland, and. Um, that group puts in circuits and uh, voice over IP phones, which are just digital telephones in the offices, and they support that, install new ones, routers and such, and um, make sure that their interconnectivity is working and all the data it, that flows through the organizations is getting from the right place you know, to, the, to the other right place, the other end of the, of the line. And then the other half of my group is, uh, we call it federal, and we support, um, the military bases here in Hawaii. We got Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and there's about 14 different locations here, some big bases, some small, and we support all the telecommunications needs for those bases. So if they need a circuit, um, we can go ahead and bring a circuit up for them. If they need, a, they need a new fiber optic cable that goes all the way across the base, we can put that in for them. You know, we can do all that stuff. We hook it all up. We don't do any of the router stuff but we do all the physical layer stuff. They call it layer one, OSI model, layer one, um, inner, inner, inner connectivity, layer one, layer two. So we got the federal side and then I got the Verizon business side. Um, what kind of organization company do you work for? It's a telecommunications company. We interconnect um, people on the wireless side and businesses on the wireline side, making sure that they can communicate with each other. Uh, describe your role, what do you do at your job? Um, I'm a senior manager, and uh, that means that um, I have supervisors under me. So I have supervisors that have technicians under them. So my role is to make sure that everybody's moving in the same direction and everybody has what they need to do their job. So um, I go ahead and make sure that I know what direction the company's going in and our organization's going in, and then I translate that to the supervisors so they can make sure the technicians are going in that direction. And most of that stuff um, is kind of high level, but it's kind of day-to-day stuff. We want to make sure that the technicians know and are supported in the role that they do. And with the COVID situation now, a lot of that today is making sure that they're protected, making sure that they're safe when they do their job. We're homebound, um, we're teleworking as the management group, but the technicians are out there in the field working uh, in the same places they've been working for years and years and years, supporting all the customers. So they have to go out and work with either customers or um, in facilities, and we have to make sure that they're safe, make sure that they have masks, um, gloves, um, and that's, you probably hear that on the news now, it's called PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. Our normal PPE is the hard hats and the vests and the steel toe shoes that all the techs wear, making sure they have the right clothing on to protect them from you know, scratches or cuts and things like that, and the right gloves to protect them from, because they do use knives and scissors and you know, tools, electrical tools, make sure that PPE is there. Now we've kind of moved it to um, virus preventive PPE, masks, um, gloves, sanitized wipes, Make sure the techs are, are familiar with how to use those and um, make sure that they do use them to protect themselves. So that's our, been our number one focus under this COVID situation right now. Um, with COVID, we have the, like I said, the managers are teleworking. So I'm at home here. I'm actually in my son's uh, Twitch room right now. I think every um, house in America these days has a Twitch room. So um, I just borrowed it for him for a little bit to do this video. and. Um, we want to 
as teleworkers, we had to make sure we have laptops and you know, you know internet. And then um, most companies have what they call VPN, virtual private networks. You're probably familiar with that. Kids are more familiar with stuff these days than I was when I was a kid. But um, virtual private networks build a tunnel from your PC to the your corporate intranet so that you can talk securely between those sites and pull your email and and get you know your documents and whatever you need to work on during the day. Um, let's see, that's COVID. I've got questions over here on my laptop. I'll go through. Whoops, too far. Um, how many people work on your team? Uh, are they just distributed? Um, on the Verizon business side, uh, there's a tech on uh, the big island of Hawaii. There's a tech on Maui. And there's two techs here on Oahu, along with a contractor that support um, our Kaisers of the world and, and do the work there. On the Verizon federal side, we've got 15 union technicians that work in Oahu. And they were all based out of Pearl Harbor, but now we've based them off, off base because you never know if um, at, at, the, at a moment's notice the military could shut the base down and we didn't want to have any problems getting on base so we moved everything off to our uh, facility which is in central Oahu. Um, what do I normally wear to work? I wore it for you today is uh, polo shirts. I think polo shirts are the uniform of business in the 2000s, probably since the 90s. When I started, I was uh, a technician and I would wear a three-piece suit. Um, when I dressed down, I would just leave the vest at home. But that's changed completely now where our executives go on CNBC and Fox and whatever, and they wear um, polo shirts or even t-shirts sometimes to talk. Um, and that was kind of unheard of when I was, a, I was uh, just getting into the, into the working world. But now I think polo shirts are, are the uniform of choice for um, everybody in the company. So you wear a polo shirt, you wear uh, slacks, um, although I think some places might be able to get away with shorts if it's like a remote site. And then, um, you know, closed toed shoes, no slippers, even in Hawaii. Um, you can actually wear Aloha shirts here too. That's acceptable. Um, what's a typical workday look like? For me, a typical workday pre COVID was fight the commute, get into the office hook up my laptop and start looking at email um, until it was time for the technicians to, to, to roll out. I would get in before they came in and then uh, make sure they all go in the right direction. You know, talk to the supervisors, make sure you know we know what the plan is for the day. Uh, I usually don't have to get in the day-to-day -day stuff, but occasionally I will. And then go back to email and I spend probably 50% of my day on email. Um, and that's responding to issues or, or um, you know, doing reports or providing updates or making sure that any complaints come in or taken care of. We don't get a lot of those, thankfully. Um, or sending up information inquiries about, hey, you know, how many trucks do you have in your fleet and stuff like that. Um, uh, with COVID now, it's teleworking from home, doing all that. But the one thing that's really changed is <clears throat> you can't go out in the field. You can't work with the techs. You have to stay at home. Um, if you go out in Hawaii here, at least you have to wear a mask and um, and conference calls. Half my day is on conference calls, talking about, and I, I'm not kidding, talk, most of them are about COVID. And every day, literally, and I'm using that word correctly, literally every day, what we do with COVID changes. It gets moved up a notch. Three days ago, we weren't supposed to use face masks. Yesterday, we were supposed to use face masks. Today. Uh, it's up to the tech, you know, so it, it goes, it changes, but every day we're getting updates and the company is extremely focused on, on COVID and safety for the employees and making sure the latest CDC recommendations, you know, are, are distributed to all the managers and we make sure that everybody's focused on that because safety is extremely important. We want to make sure the techs who are out in the field working with our customers are as protected as they possibly can. They don't want them to come down with anything. Um, that could be detrimental to their health. Um, salaries. So um, our technicians on the uh, VZB side are probably, um, I think they're, they're a little bit different. So they're probably in the 70s and 80s range uh, salaries and then can go up. On the federal side, they're union technicians. So they're bargained, meaning every three years they bargain for what you know, kind of salaries and benefits and stuff like they have. Um, <clears throat> I think they, they're somewhere between $25 and $30 an hour. 
and then there's a, a, a scale that goes up and it depends on their skill level. Um, union technicians, if you want to go into the union, they start as an apprentice and then after you get 10,000 hours or whatever it is, um, you can go to that next level and then you get a bump and then you can go to the next level. I think licensed technicians, probably the highest level and then you're at the max and then um, with non-union, you know, you get performance reviews, you get raises. If you do a good job, you get a little bit more. If you do a bad job, you get a little bit less. With union side, everything is bargain, so it's fixed. It doesn't matter if you're the best or the worst. You're one big happy family, and everybody, you know, gets the same thing. So that's a little bit different if you want to get into that. Uh, executive salary levels, um, supervisors. I wouldn't say these are executive, and I, I consider an executive at the director level and above, but um, if you want to become a supervisor, say you're like a good technician, and usually the, the uh, career path is you're uh, a good technician and you want to get to um, you know, have more responsibility and control more of the organization, so you want to get into a supervisor position. Um, here, supervisor is somewhere between 70 and 90 in that area, depending on how much experience you have and what your background is. And then if senior managers, somewhere between, let's say 90 and 150, somewhere in that range. Um, directors are in the 200s, I believe. Um, I haven't actually seen their salaries, but I believe so. And then you get VP, senior VP, and then um, you're at higher level executives. And those higher level executives, you can see their salaries on the web. I think our, our CEO makes like 800 and something a year, plus 14 million in, in stock options and stuff like that. Usually you wanna give them a bunch in stock so that they're motivated to make sure that the company does well. The better the company does, the more money they make. Um, and one thing I, I would mention is, um, I always was kind of in the impression like, oh geez, I'm not, I'm not executive material. I, I can't make those kind of decisions. Really, as, as somebody starting out, I try not to think that way. Try to think that, um, every level that you might want to get you can get there it's it's just different skills you just learn different skills and you learn how to manage different situations and different people i mean a great finance background is usually a good thing a law background usually doesn't hurt um but you know the decisions that they're making you think wow i could never make that decision that's because you you haven't made that decision you know if you're a minor league baseball player and you want to get to the pros it's like wow i can't do what he does no you can do what he does you just have to practice you know, you want to get in the WNBA and you're in high school, you just have to practice and you have to learn what skills are and gather that knowledge. It's the same thing in business. You can you can hit any level. Don't think you have to get into a particular job because once you get into where you want to go, try to make sure you got a career path going. You know, you know what you need to do. Make plans uh, that you want to get to a certain level. You want to get to that certain job. And what do you need to do to get there? What are your milestones? You're not going to hit all of them. You know, maybe some of them you hit, you can hit faster. Some of them are going to take longer. Some of them you're going to miss completely. But unless you have a, a plan, it's going to be harder to get there. You're just going to have to fall into it. If you got a plan and say, I want to be this by this time, I want to be that by that time, it's going to really help you out. And the second thing that's going to really help you out is mobility. And I mean physical mobility. Um, I went from San Jose to uh, San Francisco to San Jose in my job, and that helped me get a, a promotion. I could have got a bigger promotion if I would have moved to East Coast, but I really liked the quality of life, my, my lifestyle, and my friends and family and things like that in the Bay Area. So I didn't want to move, so I sacrificed career mobility to, to keep with my local, local local group. And I've talked to some of the directors I've had, and all of them, I think pretty much all of them, but maybe one, have had to move around the country to get that job, you know, to move up. because. Unless you're with a really big company, um, or actually probably a small company, and somebody quits, then you're not going to have that mobility in the same location. So you have to think about that. You, you know, it's, it, it can be a sacrifice, it, you could, or it could be a, a you know a good thing for your life that you move to a new location. You know, learn a little bit more about the world around you. Um, you ever feel discouraged at any point in your career? Uh, the thing that probably was most discouraging was when I was working in San Jose, I, um, my company went bankrupt. It was a big company and it was a precursor to, to Verizon actually. So everybody got laid off and I was obviously discouraged then because I didn't want to get laid off. But um, I started a, a business with my wife and we were teaching after school programs for elementary and middle school kids. 
um, science enrichment programs, and that was actually a, a lot of fun. It was after school and summer programs. Um, <clears throat> and the, the funnest part of that was we were able to teach kids. We got a lot of highly motivated kids. In the Bay Area, you get some some really tiger momish children, um, but they're really smart and they're really motivated. And um, I was able to pick and choose. I was able to cherry pick a lot of the, the really good science experiments and stuff. So I got to work with dry ice and you know fake snow and stuff like that. And I didn't have to worry about the math part of it and you know read chapters one through five before you come into work to, uh, school tomorrow. Um, I could just hit the fun stuff. So I was able to teach but the kids were having a lot of fun building the rockets, you know, with water and stuff like that. So that was a, that was a real kick, taking them to NASA because we were in the Bay Area. We were able to go to Ames Research Center, you know, tons of good stuff. Um, so that was less discouraging. But then I came over to Hawaii and um, I was looking for a position. So there was an opening for a supervisor in Verizon, but it was a different level. I was a... Um, uh, a supervisor that kind of supported like Cisco routers and and configuring backbone networks and stuff like that you know huge ATM frame relay uh, those kind of networks and then here it was more physical stuff you know putting cable in the ground and wiring it up and stuff like that so I had to learn a different skill set so I was spending 8 10 11 hours a day when I first started as a supervisor here learning that stuff <clears throat> and then I was doing construction the construction side putting the cable in the ground and then after a while, I moved over to the maintenance side after a couple years, or actually a year and a half. And then we were doing support. And then after that, this uh, Miracle of Miracles, the senior manager job opened up and I applied for it and I got it. Um, so that background, you know, helped me get to where I wanted to go, which was back to my senior level position. And if I want to get into a director, I would definitely have to move to the mainland because there's no directors in Hawaii. Um, some of the advantages and disadvantages of your profession. Uh, I, I, maybe not my profession, but my job. Like I said, I can um, I can stay in the office and do my work, but I can go in the field still, and I can you know work with the techs, and I can contribute in that way, help them help them out, um, you know, remove obstacles. Uh, as a manager, I think my number one job is to remove obstacles for the people in my group to do their jobs because they're the ones that really do the work. You know, I'm sitting up doing reports and stuff, and they're actually building widgets and fixing problems and things like that. So that's the biggest thing there. Um, and then anything else I wanted to share, uh, I think for you going um, from high school to college, probably most of you go to college, some of you won't, you're gonna do other things, but um, I think the biggest thing to prep, if you haven't started prepping now, it's, it's not too late, but it's close to too late. So if you don't have a tiger mom, pushing you from the back, you know, you're gonna to have to do it yourself, but it's always good to get your parents involved. And one of the things that we did with my son was make sure his extracurriculars were structured in such a way that they were consistent across all his years of high school. He was interested in journalism in his um, freshman year of high school. So we got him some working with him, um, more working at him at that point, because he wasn't really thrilled about this. But, um, making sure that his uh, extracurriculars were focused on journalism so we got him some stuff and then later on he started getting his own stuff but every year was journalism related he worked at a um, Bay Area radio station he worked at a, um, later on when we came to Hawaii he was still in high school so he worked at the, the NPR station in Hawaii um, and in between he did some other journalism stuff he actually interviewed the current governor of California Gavin Newsom when he was a, well, a, wee, a wee lad um, uh, when he was mayor of San Francisco. So he's always been kind of interested in journalism and his extracurricular showed that. He was consistent. He didn't do soup kitchen the first year, um, you know, um, working at a radio station the second year, um, working in a mechanic shop the third year, and then, you know, doing something else, and helping old ladies cross the street in his fourth year. He was consistent. So the college, when they look at that, they can see, well, this person's got a plan. Now, the, the secret to that is you may have a plan in your first two years, you may change your mind, but you don't have to change your extracurriculars, and you don't have to change what major you tell the college until, you, until they accept you. Once they accept you, you can do whatever you want. So you can do journalism, 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 they accept you, you come there and you go, I want to major in computer science. You know, it's, it's fine, you can go ahead and do that. So just, you know, whatever you have to do to get into college, you, you really want to do. And then the second thing was your essay is really, really important. What makes you different? than anybody else. So what he did is he wrote his essay, uh, I looked at it, his mom looked at it, 
his best friend looked at it, uh, a person that he knew got into a really good college the year before looked at it, and then somebody he knew in Los Angeles looked at it, and then you just have a bunch of people give you feedback, and then he took the best from everything, put it into his essay, and when he sent it through, he was able to get into, um, he got into an Ivy League college, so that was, that was the highlight of his life up to that point. So those are my tips for getting into college. You gotta have decent SATs. I mean, he didn't get perfect SATs, but he got pretty good. Oh, yeah, take SAT practice exams. He went from, I forgot what the numbers were, but every single practice exam, he did better, 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 better until he took the um, actual SAT. I think he got perfect in math, but he didn't get perfect in the other ones. Um, practice, 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 practice. You know, and then uh, you can get a book, those are very helpful. You can you can try and get into tutorial classes out there. Those are great, um, but do that. And then of course you need to have a decent grades. So he didn't have a 4.5 GPA or whatever it is now. That's crazy, but he still got you know decent SATs. So he wasn't eliminated on SATs or grade level uh, GPA, um, but he was he was up there good enough. Plus it didn't help that he it didn't hurt that he came from a small state because um, uh, in California there's 1.5 billion children trying to get into college the same year you are. Um, in Hawaii, it's not as much. So it was nice because they like to pull from all the different states. So that's it. Uh, appreciate the, the time. And um, uh, if any questions, you probably won't be able to get a hold of me, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.